When it comes to graphics cards, nine years is a very long time. It's more than enough time, in fact, to take a flagship tier graphics card and turn it into a dumpster fire tier graphics card. But is it the same story with CPUs? Now, to answer this question, I decided to pit the first ever six core consumer CPU, kind of, against the newest six core CPU to see if the gap between these two is as gaping as it would be with equivalent graphics cards. The first of the two CPUs that we're gonna pit head to head in a six core versus six core challenge is the Intel i7-980, which is an X58 platform based CPU, which means it's not entirely accurate calling it a consumer CPU, but it was one of the first readily available six core CPUs. Whereas the newest six core CPU that we're comparing it to is the Ryzen 5 5600X, which is a seven nanometer high IPC game behemoth of a CPU. So I'm curious to see how these two stack up. Before we get into the benchmarks, let's have a look at the two platforms that I'm going to be using for the various CPUs in this challenge. Now, as far as the i7 goes, I'm going to be using this Gigabyte G1 Sniper X58 board that looks really good. This is back in the day when bright colors schemed motherboards were still a thing, and I really like the way it looks. Another cool thing about X58 as a platform is that it has triple channel memory. It is DDR3, but there's something really awesome about that huge bank of dim slots on the right hand side of the motherboard. Now, as far as the RAM goes, I'm going to be using 24 gigs for the i7 system. So it's three 8 gig sticks of DDR3 1600 megahertz, which is weirdly expensive if you want to buy it from a shop these days, which I had to because it's because of short notice and stuff like that. Now, when moving over to the system that I'm going to use with the Ryzen 5 5600X, I'm actually using an ITX motherboard because it's the only B550 or X570 board that I have available for this test, but it's still got a pretty beefy VRM and it doesn't really hold the CPU back much. So I'm going to be using this Asus Strix B550i board on the AMD CPU. I'm actually going to have less RAM available because I'm really bad at math and I couldn't make three divide into 16. <laughs> I mean, I'm joking, but still. So we've got a little bit less RAM, but it is running at a faster speed. So I thought that's a worthwhile trade-off to make. And 16 gigs is still enough for all of the games that we're testing. So we're not gonna run into any bottlenecks necessarily. Um, but yeah, so it's running a DDR4, 3600 megahertz, and it's a Tridizi kit. As far as the GPU goes, I'm using an RTX 3080. And considering that I'm gonna be benchmarking most of the benchmarks at 1080p, it's, it's, yeah, we're not gonna have a GPU bottleneck here. I'm also gonna be using the same cooling for both of the CPUs, which is NZXT's new Z53 240 millimeter AIO, and I've slapped some Noctua NFA12 fans on there just to, just to overkill it to the max. One of the things that I really like about this AIO is that you can display beautiful GIFs on, on, the, on the CPU block. So with all of the semantics out of the way, let's lock these two CPUs in a room without parental supervision and see what happens. Okay, I'm gonna stop these benchmarks right here because three benchmarks in, I thought, Wow, this i7 is doing way worse than I thought it would be doing. And then I redid those benchmarks with MSI Afterburner so that I could see what the CPU was doing. And I realized that this old i7 has a real loser auto boost algorithm in there. It was basically just running at its stock frequency, which felt a little bit unfair to me considering the fact that the Ryzen 5 5600 has just an uber amazing auto overclock feature, which basically does a better job than you could do if you manually overclocked it. So I thought I'm gonna do the rest of the benchmarks and redo the ones I already did with an overclocked i7-980 because I feel like it's more representative of, you know, to the limit performance of these two CPUs. Considering that comparing a 980 to a 5600X is already like pitting a 56 year old against an 18 year old in like a 100 meter sprint, I didn't also want to repeatedly tase the 56 year old right before the race. Uh, yeah, so this just feels a bit more fair. Now, when it comes to overclocking the 980, 
I didn't have a great time. On the internet, I was reading that some people could overclock the CPU to like 4.4 gigahertz with just like an AIO or like a, a, a liquid cooling system on there. Whereas the highest core frequency I could get was 4.05 gigahertz. Any higher and it would crash constantly. Um, and I don't think it's a temperature issue either because this Z53 AIO with those Noctua fans on it, it's, it's really good at cooling these six core CPUs. So yeah, that was the best I could do. Now, bearing that in mind, let's get back into the head-to-head -to, -head to see how the Overclock 980 compares to the boost frequency 5600X. Even with the 980 running at 4.05 gigahertz as opposed to the 3.4 gigahertz-ish that it was running at with the previous tests, the gap is still pretty big. Starting off with Escape from Tarkov, Escape from Tarkov really doesn't like old CPUs apparently, and it seems like it's a reasonably CPU intensive game. There is a, there's a big difference here. When it comes to Battlefield 5, again, the difference is clear. Um, although with the overclock, the 980 feels significantly more playable than it did when it was running at 3.4 gigahertz, so yeah, there's that. GTA 5 made a difference, but you were still getting high refresh rate-ish gaming results with the 980, although it's about 40% slower than, than the 5600X here. The place where it made the biggest difference, though, seems to be with eSports titles. CSGO got 677 frames per second average with the 5600X on low settings compared to a measly 300 frames per second with the 980. That 677 FPS is madness, actually, if you think about it. Um, the same goes with Rainbow Six Siege. You're, you're getting a pretty big jump in performance. Where the i7-980 gets absolutely curb stomped is when it comes to Cinebench. Here, we have more than double the performance from the Ryzen 5 5600X. Just look at that single core difference, it's madness. And it's not just performance. I mean, the price point difference between these two CPUs at launch is huge. I mean, the 5600X is the runt of the range at the moment, whereas the 980 was like the beast of the range. So you also take that into account and the fact that there's a huge TDP difference between the two CPUs. The Ryzen CPU also kicks the 980 in the balls when it comes to feature set. It's got things like PCI Express 4 as supposed to be PCI Express 2, which could be one of the things affecting the gaming performance. You've got M.2 slots on the motherboard and much better I.O. The X58 board only has two SATA 6 gigabit per second ports, which are like an additional kind of chip that they had installed on there. So you have to install drivers and stuff for it. It's not just like natively supported. The much better boost algorithm on the new Ryzen CPU. It took me about an hour to get that 4.05 gigahertz stable on the, on the 980, whereas with the Ryzen Ryzen CPU, you just set and forget, and it works really well. So who knew? Apparently the 980, which is a nine-year-old CPU, doesn't compare very well to a brand new seven nanometer Ryzen CPU. Although, getting back to the comment that I made in the beginning of the video, if you compare a nine-year-old flagship GPU to like a current gen mid-range GPU, I honestly think there'd be a much bigger difference between the two. CPUs seem to age much better than GPUs because all of these modern games were still playable on the 980, whereas it's not necessarily going to be playable on the, the GPU that was the king back then. So with that, it brings me to the end of the video. Now this motherboard I actually got for a PC build challenge with Timmy Joe, which didn't quite work out very well for me. So if you wanna check that out, I'll have it linked in the description below. And yeah, if you liked the video, like and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this one. And until the next video, bye-bye.